When the creator made the birds, he looked at them all and he said to the birds, I need to give you a voice. Before the sun comes up, I want you to take off towards the heavens and the bird that can fly the closest to the spirit world will get the greatest song of all the birds. The little hermit thrush looking at the big eagle standing beside him. He thought to himself, this is my chance to get the greatest song of all the birds. So he jumped up on back of the eagle. And as each bird would fly to their capacity, they would turn and pick up their song. Before too long, there was only a few birds left in the sky. And one of the main birds was the eagle. And he had just witnessed the last bird turning and heading back towards land. He decided, I'm going to go a little higher because I want the best song. So up he goes. Just as he got up to his capacity to turn to come down, the little bird that was riding on back woke up and he flew out. The eagle felt something and he looked and he turned and he could see that little bird. And now he knows what that little feeling was he had in his back. The creator realized that what happened was wrong and that the eagle was robbed of his blessing. So he called the eagle over to his side and he says, I am going to make you my messenger bird. You will take the prayers of the people and you will fly as high as you can and release their prayers and what they need in their life to me. And then I will give you answers and you will bring it back to the people. And especially when our people need confirmation in their life, they will see the eagle come to them and bring them a confirmation that what they're thinking in their mind at that point is being honored and you will know the Creator's watching over us with the eagle. This was a, a great thing for all of us to learn as children because the eagle put so much time and effort into wanting to be the best. Even though he didn't have to fly any higher, he wanted to go as high as he could. As people, we should always put effort into our prayers to be the best we can be. And that's why I carve a lot of the eagles taking off towards the spirit world. Dejaneni Agüedoros. That's my indigenous name, cutter of stone, or where the stone is halved. And my English name is David Robert Miracle. I choose to carve stone because it's it's forever. It will never deteriorate. So our story will continue. I would look at a raw stone and see the image coming out of the stone before I even touch it. So I look at the stone and if I see there's a story in there that creator is giving me that particular stone to use, I'll turn it, look at the colors and the shape and the size. I will see these things coming out. There's things locked in the stone and they've been there for thousands of years, just waiting for their story to come out and be available to the rest of the world. I love to put the water on there. I'll sponge water over it. And that even helps to dictate even further because then I, I operate with the colors and the shapes of the stone. Because then I can, you know, have flesh tones and different things, like if I'm carving a feather. And then I treat the stones with different oils and waxes and lacquers and things to actually seal the pores of the stone. So it actually holds the moisture into the stone, the beauty. Because the stone does take a long time to do, I think it's important that, you know, we don't always have to stay in the same groove of doing the exact same thing every day. So I would stand and look at the stone, and before you know it, I, I had a second thing happening in my life, and that was music. I love the sound of music and it's a great way to express myself. I love the fact that it brings a lot of peace and love to people that listen. It's nice when I come out to the woods 
coming out and finding all my my bones and stones and playing in the forest. It's just like the forest is my playground. Nature is very important to me. We have to respect them. They were here long before we were, and then we came along to ruin their life and, and their environment. The pollution that they have to deal with because of the human negligence. It's good for us to give back and it's good for me to always talk about the animals in nature. I love backing and supporting people that are out cleaning the oceans and, and doing these things to help protect the future generations to come. Because those little ones with those beautiful eyes looking up at us, we have to make sure that we leave behind things for them to have. We have to put that inspiration into them to be able to walk in beauty, see the things that we see. The best thing I can do is continue to try to walk the path that I've chosen in life, continue to carve the symbolisms, do the music, but also have the stories that we can give to the youth that they can use or not use. But it's an opportunity for them to pick up something and see if they can apply it to their life and if it works. It's pretty easy to put your mind into doing something you love and mastering that and then taking it out and sharing that. And you know, I think when you share things in life, I think the creator and the natural world and all the natural things that surround us pushes us further 